Hello everyone, welcome back to the Get Back on this glorious, beautiful Tuesday. It's a rainy Tuesday. Um, right now, all you see is me. I'm Jessica, <laughs> one of the hosts, <laughs> waiting for anyone else to me join me. I'm coming, I'm coming. Give me a second. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah. Daniel Dildana. I'm here. I'll share it low. Damn. <laughs> there we go. All right. Hello, everybody. Hang on. Uh, yeah. Give me a second. Let's this get is, ourselves this, together here, man. summer show over again. We just want to, I just want to make it clear. Half our crew's not here, and they're not going to be here. Show it's just up. always it's just always us. No, me will show up. Oh God, she's, I believe it when it, I see it. If she's it. coming late, she's coming late. No, when that when she says late, that means I will not be there. <laughs> Have faith. Have faith. Tired of faith. No, I'm kidding. Well, uh, okay. Well, let's. And into. the intro song has finally grown on me. Oh, it has. That beat. I was not a fan. I told you, it, 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 it's the beat drop. It's all in the beat drop. Once that beat drops, we're going. I still feel like we can find another one, Lewis, but it's still good. Okay, okay. So <laughs> Lewis is at work right now. At work. So he he won't be here for uh, the Thursday show either. Yeah. But he is still doing post production. We appreciate that. He was posting it on Wednesday. We appreciate that. And a little bit of a special announcement. We'll see what happens. Sam will be returning on Thursday. Oh, Sam! So we're gonna have another OG back. Beat him last night. Yeah, you beat him in fantasy. <laughs> everyone, everyone, who had a, who had a bad night other than Sam? Oh, poor Sam. I went three. Yeah, the man I don't know. What, I don't know. He didn't make good picks. I don't know. My team is very up and down, but now I'm two and one. I love it. It's all in the redraft. The man needs the redraft because he did not draft good. But I, I say this every year: you drafted your team, you got to live by your team. But we have a small league, so why? I mean, there's tons of good players that are not on anyone's team. So what? pick did he have that his team is not performing he had well. five he took Jamar Chase on one and he waited to get Trevor Lawrence all the way for a quarterback mm. so hey you need the redraft what do you want to tell you yeah. but it's still early it's, it's I take on Max four. next yeah I beat Max so don't worry about it <laughs> anyway welcome to Just Therapy Hour because <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently one show wasn't enough we need another hour every week it's going to be Jets Therapy Hour yeah on well, Tuesdays Unless on something Tuesdays. fantastic happens to us. Well, unless we beat the Chiefs on Sunday night, which is um, which is not going to be great. No. But, but before, before let's, you know, jumping the gun, <clears throat> let's backtrack. Yeah. To Sunday. Mm-hmm. The Jets lost to the Patriots 15 to 10. Um, but 15 to 10? 15 to 10. Um, I don't, I don't even care anymore. I mean, I mean. Literally, yo, I, mean, I never thought I'd see the words, but in the WhatsApp group chat, Daniel was like, I'm done. They broke me. That's yeah. it. That's I, because it. I'm over it. I'm I, like I, I at this point I'm over it. I mean, I, how much more do you want me to to invest in this team when this team clearly does not see themselves as a no, winning team? And I mean, I, I, is it delusion? Is it, 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 it is it we're trying to protect ourselves? I I don't I don't get it. And like it, it it's not because that like I don't believe in this team. I do. I don't believe in this coaching staff, and I don't believe in Zach Wilson. I don't. Well, it becomes evident that, you know, besides Aaron Rodgers, there was no true, and I said it last week, and this Sunday proved it again, there is no true transformation of the team. Even though, yes, the defense is great, clearly it is not enough to hold it together. Right. And so it's, it's just disheartening and it's discouraging because – even if Rodgers was, we would be in a better position. But when you see all the other mistakes they make, it's kind of like, oh, are they really that good? <laughs> right. Is it better? Like, if you're Rodgers and you're sitting back, are you like, thank God I hurt my foot now or my Achilles now instead of, like, halfway through the season where we'd probably fall apart even worse? Like, I don't know. I, be, I, I don't believe buyer's that. Buyer's remorse? I, I, <laughs> I, don't think it's, I don't think he would have buyer's remorse because he would be handling this offense. I mean, I mean, look, you know, I hate Tony Romo as an announcer. I really do. The guy gets on my nerves, and he, he's such a fake announcer. But what he's mentioning about Zach Wilson missing open guys, he's not wrong. And you have yeah. to think that a competent quarterback would get it to Garrett Wilson on an open route like that, would know what the play is and see the defense for what it is, and not having to hold the ball and force a check down. Unf- the, the worst play of the game for me was that fourth and ten. 
when the prior play, he had a wide open receiver in the check down, which he could have thrown it to, knowing that we needed a, four, a first down, we were going to go for it on a fourth down either way. And he doesn't throw the check down, he forces a, a fourth and ten. And then when you need ten yards, and you need to throw it to the first down marker, he throws it to the check down. And Tyler Coughlin gets tackled immediately. So do you think it's like he really doesn't know how to be a quarterback? Or is he just so, like, nerve-ridden? Is he, like, mentally destroyed upstairs that he can't do anything It's right? got to be mentally because there's nothing wrong with him physically. His arm's still a, well, a, a howlet, sir. Well, I think, you know, he probably should have been taken number two. And like I said before, and we all know this, not everyone peaks in the NFL. Some people peak at college. I, BYU I, yeah. could have been his, his days. That's right. it. I, but I, I think, too, that it's not that they didn't set him up properly, right? And that's on the Jets because they didn't. They gave him the job, which immediately lost in the locker room, let's be real. They didn't set up a veteran quarterback to help him out. They gave him competition, which didn't work. And then he just he lost it. You know, he did, he, ne- he never understood the playbook with LaFleur here. He never had a coach that backed him. Well, the coach now is refusing. To undeny him, yeah. And why do you think he's being – do you think maybe – so maybe, say, Aaron is still on board with everything. Do you think maybe Aaron is telling the coach, look, we got to keep Zach because if you put Zach out, then you're really going to lose – like, what do you think – I don't. Because what is his reasoning? There's no way, Coach. You're the coach, and you're not seeing what everyone else is seeing. Are we missing something? Is no. there something we're not seeing? Okay, because like, like, okay, we printed out some of his quotes here, right? So we had, so right now, he's who gives us the best chance to win. <laughs> I'm not worried about the locker room," said Sala. "We've got a great room. They'll be fine. They don't look fine." His, this, to me, is the best one. His pocket presence to us has been so much more improved. His accuracy is much improved. How is His decision-making is more improved. I like, like I said, New England's got a hell of a defense over there. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, we know they have a hell of a defense. You want to tell me his accuracy improved? Yeah. You yeah. want to tell me that he's better in the pocket? Why is he getting a safety in the end zone? Dude. Do you think Come on! Do you think it's like pride and ego, him and the general manager, just I, like they don't want to admit that, okay, we made a major mistake putting this guy on the field. They all got egos. They all got egos. And, and, and But how bad, how bad is the ego? I didn't know it was this bad, right? Because because every general manager is going to live and die by their draft picks. They are. They're never going to want to give them every opportunity possible to succeed because they don't want to get it wrong. Right? It's like you're wasting a really high pick, which could have gone to another player that could help us out. Right, So you don't want that pick to be a bust. And I, I get that. I understand that. But there's got to come a point where you realize we're losing games because of it. And if we're losing games, I don't have a job. Right? So I, Well, I, that's I, what I'm I, saying. Why are they... Is it that bad? And I feel like you're making him worse by forcing him to play. I, If you're Zach Wilson, do you wake up like, I hate my job. Like, I hate this. This is not what, like, I, why do I have to go out there? Now you're putting me in front of the Chiefs. Are you serious? You're going to put me on the same field as Patrick Mahomes and their defense? You, and, want, you want to know what it looks like? Like, look, why are you putting me through this? It doesn't look <laughs> like he cares. I don't want to say he doesn't care. But, uh, like, but like, I think he can, he probably can admit, you know, I'm just not good at this. Maybe this is not what I thought. I clearly need to be a quarterback that needs a full three years of training. I was overhyped, you know, and some of his p- teammates are still trying to back him, but they're, no, and honestly, no, I they're think they're done. I, they're done, dude. Well, they're done probably behind, but in, on camera, they're still trying to say, yeah, he's our guy and we trust him. Dude, Garrett Wilson <clears throat> told Alan Lazar or Randall Cobb. He can't throw he it. He can't throw it. <laughs> like, like once. And not just that, but another <laughs> player, <laughs> another player got into a fight with his coach on the sideline. I, and uh, this is the other part of the argument. That's, right? that's what I'm saying. It's like starting to unravel. So as, as a week coach. Three, it's week three. You just have to, you just have to bite the bullet. He's not our guy. Mm-hmm. Let's just go for a veteran quarterback that can at least help us sustain the season. Mm-hmm. Okay, we are not. I don't believe you. There's no way you're going to the playoffs like this. There's no way. No, no, because uh, Sunday against the Patriots was a must-win game. We all knew it. We. I'm oh, sorry. I, I, I busted my. That was not that. We all knew it, right? We all knew that was a must-win game. The Patriots knew it. The Jets knew it. 
We knew it. Everybody in New York knew it. Because the fact of the matter is, we're playing the Chiefs, and then we play the Eagles. Yeah, and we're not doing well and we're against going, those teams. And we're going I'm one sorry. and five. Okay? And, like, it's like, maybe it'll take Sunday Night Football. Maybe it'll take the prime time for the entire nation to see, <sighs> damn, Zach Wilson's a terrible quarterback. Because, but that's because, what I'm saying. That's why I put him through that ringer. Now let's just talk about, like, the emotional and mental state of the rest of the team, him and the fans. Like, why do that type of – clearly, because now since since you didn't make a plan B in case Rodgers – I don't now I don't know what world we were all living in to think that wasn't going to happen to him. But you made no plan B to bring in a middle quarterback in case Rodgers does get hurt. There's no way we can still put Zach on the field. So we need a proper backup. We had a backup. And now you have none. You know what's funny? We had a backup for Zach Wilson. And his name was Tim Boyle. And apparently Tim Boyle's arm doesn't work. Apparently. Well, he got cut after training camp. And then they had to re-sign him, supposedly. Because Aaron Rodgers got hurt. And it's like. But, okay, so then, like I said, so since they didn't make a plan B. The coaching staff is clearly not all together. <laughs> they don't have. They are not. Sure, they're not strategists. They are not. No. They don't have foresight. They don't have like. They're not looking forward. It's all about today. It's all about right now. Well, right now we don't have a backup, so we just got to use Zach Wilson. And I'm like, why don't we just go get Kirk? I, this is what I'm saying. Like, I, why? Why are people shutting that down? Don't tell me the Vikings want to hold on to him. He's he's giving you nothing. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I read a What's stat. What's your excuse to hold on to him? I, I read a stat the other day. Um, apparently, PPR, which is how every league measures quarterbacks, right? Apparently, the percentage of quarterbacks that make a third down conversion every drive is about 70%. That's average, okay? that That's, like, below average. That's, like, a Justin Fields type of average, Okay. Zach Wilson is at 7%. So he's like not even in the curve. Percent. <laughs> What's it called? The curve? He's not even in the arc. <laughs> he's not even in the arc. He f- flew through the arc. Yeah, the arc's there. I he flew right through it. So if you're the coach and the GM, at right now you have to be like, okay, he, he could play Chiefs, but by the time Eagles come, we got to have another quarterback in here. Because every day that he's here, you're losing somebody learning the playbook. Unless they're talking yeah. to somebody and somebody, they somebody has a playbook. That's the only way I see it. And every day he's here, everyone is and everyone is anxious. Everyone's got angst. Everyone's on eggshells. Mm-hmm. I do think <clears throat> one thing I think Aaron did help is you know the spirit of the locker room. You know, giving these people hope. Mm-hmm. You know, giving them a vision that they didn't have before. So you know, there's players trying to hold on to that vision, even though they know it may not actually mm-hmm. happen. But just to hold on to the camaraderie that they thought they built. Right during the off season. Right. But clearly it did not translate to actually trying to stick together. Right. I mean, like, it, it's unraveling. I mean, w- when you have Garrett Wilson shouting at him and telling people he can't throw, and, and, and you have players literally yelling at your coaching staff saying, I'm not getting the ball enough, there's a problem in the locker room. Or And when, it's week three. Or when you lose your longest, biggest most successful fan you have, the legendary Joe Namath, when you have him tweeting and saying he has had enough, now this guy has been the only one to bring us a Super Bowl. And we weren't even, our parents were like babies or children. And the thing about Joe is that he just shuts up. He he, yeah, he, he don't say. he supports every year. He, he don't say anything. He's like, yeah, I'm excited. Let's but go. Uh, on Twitter, I, I, w- I was, was not off. expecting this. Because, so, so Joe Namath is not like verified on Twitter, so you don't know. This was, mm-hmm. this could just be somebody, but you could tell by who they follow. This is actually Joe Namath, and I've been following him for a while. And the critiques just started rolling in. So, yeah. <clears throat> first one, I'm starting to wonder if Zach's playing. He's like he's being coached. He's making choices that are not intuitive to a quarterback position. I, I, is he wrong? Is is he wrong? I mean, I, the fact that this guy has this his third year now. And he hasn't figured... Like, it's one thing if he's making plays and he's reading defenses and he just he's just making mistakes. That's one thing. The fact that he has this unawareness of where to go with the ball and has this hesitation f- for a third-year quarterback should not be the case. No, and he goes on to say on the Michael K. show, I've seen enough of Zach Wilson. I've seen enough. 
He has quick feet, can throw it a little bit, but I don't believe what he's what's going on up here. Yo, once yo, you said it to me on WhatsApp. Once Joe Namath starts talking like uh, Kenny from Hoboken, it's a problem. <laughs> like it, it, it's a problem. Like like w- once Joe Namath starts talking like a WFAN yeah, caller, it's a problem. Once you lose him, because it's insulting. Yeah, it's insulting. Like here I am in the beginning of this season or over the summer. Before the summer, when they were trying to get Aaron Rodgers, here's Joe Namath like, I'll give you my number. They can unretire it. I don't care. You're the hope. And everyone's great. He was even given mm-hmm. he was even given kudos to Zach Wilson and the deep the whole, all summer. Love the Jets. We got it. We got it. We got it. Even when Aaron injured himself, he was still showing support to Zach Wilson, mm-hmm. still willing to believe in us. And then Sunday he just something snapped. Poor old Joe. Poor Proof old Joe. that everyone has a limit. How old is Joe? Joe's got to be like eighty. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, like he, he, but he's got to be in his seventies at least, at least, because in 1963 was it 62? He was like twenty something mm-hmm. years old. Sixty nine. They want. He's eight. He's exactly eighty years old. Yeah, he's eighty. God, oh, dude, we have an eighty year old old man bashing <laughs> this franchise. The Poor le- Joe. Oh. You know he's knocking on the door, and this is how he has to. <laughs> his uh, final year. Yeah, you know, <laughs> he, you know, he's dialing into on, to, on the fan show with that. Uh, What's that called? The the the, the payphone. He's <laughs> putting the quarters in. He's just slamming it, the receiver down. Uh, but like, like what? Like what more do you need to see? Like like what is there left in Zach Wilson that makes you believe? I think this guy is the guy. I think it comes down to the coaches and the GMs, just personal beliefs and egos. Because I feel like around the league, you see a lot of coaches over the last few seasons and. Throwing their players on. If they have to, yeah, he sucked today. He did not play well. Yeah. Salah refuses. Refuses. I th- and I th- it's like, you you can't be that You like, can't be that into yourself where you're just like, yeah, we. this is not a good look for us yeah. right now. You well, can't even say that. But like, what I get is, like, what I don't get is, like, last year, he kind of said it, right? When Mike White was here, he was like, yeah, Zach, you know, he still needs to learn. Maybe you should go read a book. So then, what happened to this one? Why do what makes you magically think that's gone now? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, like what else is there to see? The guy can't throw. The guy can't make a check down. The guy has to take a sack in the end zone that costs us the game. The guy he had three chances. The Jets had three chances in the final four minutes of the game on Sunday. Right, they had because the defense gave them three chances. Right, they had the first stop. Where they had a, where they got pinned in the end zone, and he took the safety, right? They had the second drive where he went fourth and ten through the check down, and then he had the last drive where he almost completed a hail mary, which and, and Randall Cobb catches that ball good on Randall Cobb, but and of course he didn't catch. Of course ball. he didn't catch because we're, we're Jets, you know, this is what happens, right? We almost had the fantastic. But he's part. also Cobb. I wouldn't call him that type of player to make that type I know. of hail mary catch. I know. Oh yeah. look, our girl is here. Yay, proving me wrong. Hi. Hello. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, 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 because to me, I just feel like a competent quarterback would have gotten not a touchdown, but at least points. Right? Like they would have well, gotten a Well, a competent quarterback would have looked like he was he he knew what he was doing, even if we right. still weren't winning. Because look at all the other teams that are that have lost, except for like Justin Fields, another one. The other quarterbacks that are losing are are they talking about them the way they're talking about Zach? No, how he's like not even they're not capable. Talk, they're not talking about them like they're the problem. That's not the problem with that team. Kirk Cousins is not the problem with the Vikings. Justin Herbert's not the problem with the Chargers. Uh, the Russell Wilson is not the problem with the Broncos. What is? Come on, that's no. their defense. He, listen, that's their defense. No, 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 no. I, but, but all last season too. No, I think he's declining too. He's uh, not. the He's declining, but he's still competent enough to go up and put twenty points on. Yeah. All right. Well, he's still competent to to make a check down pass. All right. Like like, like like this is my point. Is like any other quarterback would have gotten points, and we would have tied the game at thirteen because he would have taken the sack in the end zone. Maybe he would have, but I going by the numbers and going by what the yeah, the eye test, we would have been in that game. We probably would have won that game. <clears throat> well, we have the guy is costing us wins. I think and he's costing us sanity. He's costing us sanity, but we don't have the luxury of taking this many losses for that's a team that wants to be in the playoffs. 
But not just that, but for a team who wants to get ready for next year for when Aaron Rodgers does come back, you don't want to deflate their deflate their ambitions to the point where it's like, I'm just going to give up for the rest of my season. I'm not going to risk my injury. I don't care if they score 70 points. Like, you don't want that type of locker room. You don't want Aaron Rodgers to come back to that. That's not what he signed up for. Right. But I feel like, too, is that, it's very, very different from Green Bay, but this organization is starting to feel like Green Bay. You know what I'm saying? I, it, what? Because like Green Bay was very, very weird. It felt like a weird, weird, but they were winning. They were winning, but like this is what I mean. It's different. It's like they had Rodgers playing, but it was like a weird vibe in that locker room with Jordan Love there, and it was always in the anticipation of Rodgers wants to leave. Here, it's like. When he comes back, Zach's gone, and it's like we're just waiting for that ball to drop, rather sooner rather than later. It's, just, it's a we- it's a weird vibe this team's giving off, and you can see it in the clubhouse. Well, that's why the I think the coach has to nip it in the butt. You can end that weird vibe right now. I know, and give your players stability and security by saying, "We messed up. Zach's got to sit down. We're gonna find another veteran quarterback." So when Rodgers does come back and he, God forbid, hurts himself again, we will have a confident backup who will at least help us, not hurt us. I mean, like, this now, because I, I, I'm i getting tired of blaming Zach Wilson. That's Some- what I'm saying. I kind of feel bad for him because it's like at this point he already showed you he can't play. So now you're doing this to yourself. Right. And I, I feel like now is the time where we have to realize that, you know, Salah is either going to be the coach in this team next year or he's not. And if he wants to be the coach in his team right he now, sit him down. He's got to sit him down, right? Anyway, <sighs> yeah. How sorry. you feeling? <laughs> a little bit better. A little bit better. A little bit better. I, I'm not. I, again, this team. The, I mean, like, I, I shut down for the day. I, I literally like. Yeah. I, I should. I, I didn't watch any of the four o'clock games. I couldn't. What? I couldn't. I. Well, I, I had couldn't. to lean on fantasy after that. Yeah, fantasy you saved know, me. Fan, uh, my team is excellent. Dude. Excellent. <laughs> Dude, I had five teams, five New York teams going that day. All right, I had, I had, well, I had my my English Premier League team, the soccer team, West Ham. Ugh. They lost. I had the Jets at one o'clock. They lost. I had the Rangers at five o'clock. They lost. All right. <laughs> I had, I had fantasy, which I won, thank God. And then I had, and then I had NYCFC, which I didn't watch. Because the game was at one o'clock. So, let me let me ask you, New York sports. Mm-hmm. Besides the Yankees, and I mean they're not doing well. Oh, and the Mets lost too. Forgot about that. They're not doing well, but the Yankees, and you can say the Giants in recent years, mm-hmm. but they're two Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. You know, besides these two franchises, mm-hmm. yo, New York sports suck. <laughs> we're not a good sports town. I'm sorry. Do you think we're a good sports town? We're a good sports town in that we have very loyal fans, but. Team wise, we suck. And, and like, like, but oh, come on, like MSG will sell out every game. Well, yeah, because it's but I think City Field, Nike Stadium will sell out but every game. I think that's just because of where we are. That's just location. That has nothing to but do with people quality. are going out to watch them. That's the thing. Yeah, because ha- people want to be in MSG. They want to be at Yankee Stadium. It's a tourist. It's a. It's like a. Bur- it's like passage. The, the, there's st- tourists, yes, but when it comes to like big name games like Red Sox, Yankees, Yankee fans are packing that. When it's, when it's Rangers, Islanders, Rangers and Islanders fans are packing that stadium. When it's Knicks, Celtics, Knicks fans are going to that game. If the Knicks are playing the Mavericks, so, it'll okay, be 50-50. Okay. So only if those few games are happening. I just feel like there's so much going on in New York that it just sucks that sports can't be one of the things that we can but Jess, brag about. Jess, when the t- well, you saw it happen. When the Knicks are winning, the fans will go, and the fans will show up. But that's up. what I'm saying. What's wrong with our teams? Why are they so dysfunctional? What is the wrong with the Mets? Oh, we need we need an hour for that one. Yo, my we, I real we, we uh, when a, you we, told me that you stopped watching the game, and I was like, wait, you know what's crazy? I watched the gym. I watched the Mets. My Met brother game. has not put on a baseball game since like June. I watched the Mets game. Yeah, I, I'm always watching. And the he's Met a game. diehard Mets fan, yeah, and always. he's just like checked out. I don't know your brother. Never met him. Probably was a great guy. Not a Mets fan. All right. What? No, <laughs> no. Right. Now he could be keeping up with it on his phone, but I, I have been subject to torture to watch the Mets for a very long time, and they just have not been on our TV screen. Yeah. Oh well. Same old Mets. All right. With that, we're gonna go into a break. We're gonna come back. More football. More us. See you next. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're back. We back. We back. We back. All right. I just wanted to just one little tie, not the bow, whatever it's called. 
put a ribbon on it. I don't know. <laughs> on on the Jets thing, uh, Jet fans, let's look forward to Sunday night, where. You know, the big question about Sunday night, I think we're all thinking about what's going to happen, is uh, is Taylor Swift going to be at the game? <laughs> because, you know, I mean, y- y- you all know how I feel about Taylor Swift. I don't care. I really don't. I, I really, like her music. It, it's her business. She can do whatever the hell she wants. But look, this is what I don't like. First of all, I like Taylor Swift, and I like Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. So sep- individually, I like them both. Um, Travis Kelsey, he has that podcast with his brother mm-hmm. where he... Sh- Shouted out Taylor, and he was mm-hmm. he, when he first tried to like kick some games. And I guess it paid off with shows. Take a shot, you'll get it. So she shows up at the Chiefs game mm-hmm. next to his mother. She's very excited. First of all, the Chiefs were blowing out the Bears. Like it was a shutout to the point where at halftime, Fox was like, "We're gonna save Bears the embarrassment and <laughs> transfer to." They switched the game to a much more competitive game. Which the Cowboys, Cowboys and the Cardinals, Cardinals, but nobody's interested in like oh not that nobody's God. interested because I definitely would have watched the Cowboys, but because it's the Cowboys, it's America's team. Everybody needs to but watch. But I America's like team. like I like Patrick Mahomes. He's my biracial brother, and you know <laughs> I like Kelsey. <laughs> what I don't like about the whole Taylor Swift <laughs> showing up is everyone's so excited that mm-hmm. oh all the Swifties are now they're NFL fans, and you know now the NFL's exposed more. And my thing is. These are fake NFL fans now. Super fake. Taylor Swift is a super fake football fan. I She's not you. a real football fan. I love you. you just say exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> She's not a real football fan. Um, she has been rumored to date other football players in the past. And her reactions to tra- to could l- seemed genuine, but it's like you know she you're wasn't on camera. There for the you know, game. of course she wasn't there, but you know you still want to show that you're supporting the yeah. person you're supposedly dating. You know, and then they leave after together. The I just feel no. like we don't need fake Swifties. We don't need fake fans in football. Stay, go to the, go to her concerts, you know. You know but I, I we a, don't need fake fans in football. I get it. It gives more exposure to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey benefited from his jersey 400% sales through the roof. But we don't need fake fans. Because what's going to happen is she's going to break up with him, make it a great song. I can't wait for the song because it's going to be fire. And then, you know, we're going to move on. Yo, the NFL album's going to go crazy. <laughs> yes, yes. me add. I have a question. Does it really matter that she's not a real fan? Obviously, we all know why she's there. She's there because it's a guy. No, it's, 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 it's not about her. Yeah, it's not about it's her. About her fans it's, yeah, that are going her. to now saturate mm-hmm. the NFL, NFL Twitter, NFL everything. Oh, my God. I'm at the football game. Yeah. And they're just going to be, you know, leeches. Yeah, leeches. And what sucks, because like I said, they're not going to be real football fans. So when... She does break up, or he breaks up with her. Where are they gonna? Are they gonna be supporting our boy then? No, a bunch of fake and phonies. Follow up question: Do you really think a bunch of Taylor Swift fans are gonna go to every single? Yes. If they think Taylor's there, yes. Uh, they were already waiting for Taylor outside the gate, outside the game. They when they heard sta- that she was there, Kansas were City Swifties a, were there. They were standing at a popcorn she has that, stand. She has that she type of. Oh, she cool. has that type of loyal fans that there. If she's there, we're going. This is the problem I had with weird tangent. I know it was the problem <laughs> that MLS is going to have with Messi, and how there's going to be a bunch of fake Messi fans at MLS games who are going to go when Messi's not even there, and it pisses me off when I see that I mean, because why are you here if Messi's not even here? I mean, they just think he's going to be there. So but he's not playing yeah, in the game. It's just, it just waters down the. It waters down everything. Waters That's it, all I'm saying. Like you, like you're there taking a seat from a fan who could have been there. Mm. Like a diehard yeah, fan. Exactly. You could have been there, and the, you're there for what reason? You're not there to watch Fair. football. Yeah, you're there to obsess over Taylor Swift. Now there are Swifties who are true NFL yes, fans. Yes, absolutely. But we all know that ain't the majority of them. Absolutely. So just, just weird. Just hope it all works out. You know, Travis Kelsey, he's been dating a bunch of girls. He had a dating show. I had no idea. It came out years ago. What? Catching Kelsey. I didn't know. That's crazy. One of his ex-girlfriends, though, came out and said that he made her pay for everything. Like, she wasn't, like, the type to spoil her. Not my business. Not my problem. And that was the first time I actually heard about him a few years ago. I was like, what? Not my business. Not my problem. <laughs> all right. He's on my fan's team, so I know. Kelsey, yeah. just keep putting points I would have had him on mine, but someone took him. First round pick, baby. Steal the draft. All right, let's uh, let's pivot now to Monday Night Football. Let's talk about uh, we had two games. Didn't care about one. Cared about the other one. So well, no, I cared about both games because I had Mike Evans and Goddard. This is what I mean. <laughs> like like fantasy football gets you invested. It does for, for games that don't matter to any of us. 
Yeah. And like all of a sudden they matter. Yeah, they do. Right. And um Bucks lost. Oh, poor Lewis, his boy. Yeah. Poor. I still got some good points though from Evans. Right. I got like twenty five points from him, I think, or something like that. What do you care about his points? Well, because I want to win. <laughs> But I personally don't care about either one of those teams, the Eagles or the Bucks. No, um, the Eagles are obviously probably go to the playoffs again, may go for a Super Bowl. Yeah, they're gonna kill the Jets in week five, week six, or whatever. Yeah. All right, so let's but, m- let's move to Rams Bengals. Our game, the game that I was definitely interested in. Yes, for what reason? Because I love Joe B. Yeah, who doesn't? I love Joe Burrow. Yeah, who doesn't? Um, I realize one of the reasons why I love Joe Burrow is because I love to watch him talk. <laughs> <laughs> I love his voice. (laughs) I like his voice. I like his, huh? What does he even sound like? He just sounds, I don't know, but there's something about his voice. I really just like his, I like the way he talks. He's hilarious. When I watch him in some of his interviews, the interview he did for Sunday Conversation was hilarious. I just like, I just like him. (sighs) He is my fantasy quarterback. I did have to bench him, though, because these first two weeks he was not, not that, so, because, so, our boy's dealing with a calf injury. Mm-hmm. Do you think he should have played last night? No. But they won. I know they won. I This is this is the argument that I made a couple they weeks ago. They put some stick behind his leg. You know they pumped it full yeah. of steroids. Have, have you ever seen the movie, um, oh, God. Well, what? not steroids, painkillers. Oh, my God. What was the movie? Uh, sea Breeze. No, I didn't. Sea Biscuit, sorry. Sea Biscuit, yes, sea I biscuit. saw Biscuit. <laughs> okay, my sea bad. <laughs> so, Footbreeze. No, Sea Biscuit. <laughs> you ever see the scene where uh, Tobey Maguire has to stick... Uh, yes. uh, the thing in his leg so yes. he can ride the horse. Mm-hmm. That's what Joby has to do. All right. And, well, and, and Toby was struggling with that stick in his leg. Well, like I said, they pumped him full of painkillers. And when you're on adrenaline, you don't get to feel that. I'm sure last night when he went home, he was like, oh, oh yeah, my God. Put him on drugs. That'll make him, that'll make him feel fine. Yeah. Well, so when, when he doesn't feel his head get concussed in. Yeah, that's fine. T- like Listen. this is my point. Like the point of the end, you you preach protection, you preach safety, you preach. He got prote- sacked a few times yesterday. I uh, look, I get it, but I get he's your best chance to win, but he's also your future quarterback. Yeah, he's your Aaron Rodgers. Well, yeah, um, he's gonna have a phenomenal career if he stays healthy. Um, but he said in the press conference it was more of a bother to him to be zero and three than to sit out okay. and purposely like. Or mistakenly re-injure himself. Because he knows it is hard to mentally come back from 0-3. They do not play in an easy division. Mm -hmm. And as good as he is, is he good to bring back a 0-3 team? Is he that good? Is the team that well when he's healthy that they can come back? I don't think the team is that good. I I get it. Making sure you pick up that win is important. Having, you know, a good enough... You know, you needed to win this game. You couldn't fall to 0-3. You, you, were, playing, you were playing, you know, Rams team is pretty good, not great, but still really good. And, you know, it, it was, you know, they waited to the last possible minute yeah, to announce Yeah, that part it. I couldn't stand. Yeah. This this secrecy. And, of course, you wanted to wait to the very last minute so the doctors could I thought he wasn't going to play. Nay. I didn't think he was going to play either. Yeah. But, obviously, you know... They did enough, and he fought enough to say, no, I'm going to play. Do whatever it is you need to do with my calf, and we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But it's another team that's proven without them, without him, they are just pr- they are just not going to do it. So mm-hmm. they need a competent backup because I do believe this calf, if it's not properly healing already, it's going to get re-injured, and then he's going to sit down. There's going to be no choice, and then you will lose those games, and then your playoff prospects – if you struggling to get to the playoffs, you're definitely probably not going to get to the Super Bowl. Right. And for someone with a quarterback like Joey B, there's no reason why you shouldn't be in the playoffs or the Super Bowl. But like, if it's an injury year, I could, I could, I could say it right. Like the same thing with this. Aaron Rodgers' injury killed the Jets' playoff hopes. Joe Burrow injury could kill the Bengals' playoff hopes. It's not that far fetched to think. But we that all know the years you don't make it, it's harder to get back. So last year they didn't make it to. The Super Bowl. So that's already mm-hmm. one step back from where they were the prior year. So if this is an injured year and they don't get to the playoffs or they struggle to get to the first round, where are they going to be next year? But I, you I, know, is he? I, I just think that they're at the level where the Chiefs are, where the Chiefs can have a down year, and by down year, but I the mean Chiefs got Andy I mean Reed. not make the Super Bowl. 
But like they could be in it every year because of Patrick Mahomes and because of the way their offenses run, because they have Travis Kelsey, because they but have. But also because I Andy think their Reed. their coach is amazing, right. and I right. don't think Zach Taylor is Andy Reid. I don't think he's Andy Reid, but I think he's has a good idea of the offense to figure it out. I think he's I, he's nowhere near defensive minded coach, but I think offensively he knows what to do with Burrow. He knows how to get the best out of Chase. He knows how to get the best. Well, they out finally of- used Chase because he right. wasn't because he kind of voiced that he was frustrated, and he even said in an interview that he kind of thinks that Joe should sit down. So this is another player. So here's a player in your locker room, an important player in your locker room, saying, you know what? I think maybe we should just take the hit zero and three because when Burrow does get better, because we have Burrow healthy. We can overcome the zero this and is, three. But this is what I'm saying. Is like it's all about oh, we care about player protection. We want to keep these guys on the field for as long as possible. Why is he playing? You as a doctor, as a team, and as a GM and as an owner can easily veto the player out. If if Joey B came into the locker room but and said no, much- I don't want to play. No, 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 Jess, I love you, but no. <laughs> There's absolutely no way that a player can override a doctor. I do there not shouldn't, want- but we all know the whole franchise is living on the thread of this player. But you got to care about the guy Who cared enough. about the Bengals before Joey B got there? But it doesn't matter because you've had success. You know what you have in him. And you know with him on the team, you're going to win. But if he's not 100% on I, the field, you're not going to win well, long term. Well, I think that, like I said, maybe they're going through, not maybe, but they are going through a lot of struggles because for the doctors and him to come together despite – the severe risk, we're like, no, we're just mm-hmm. gonna play because they know they got big issues. They're not coming back from zero and three, even maybe if he's healthy. So maybe last night he was basically saying his press conference, like, you guys know if I was to sit out, we'd be asked out for the season. Ain't no way I'm gonna let that go down. But now I'm just hoping that you do not re injure because your their bye week is in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. So anything can happen between now and then. Who's they playing next? I'll tell you in a second. But go ahead. Oh, Continue your thought. I, I saw their schedule yesterday. I forgot. But, yeah, um, I think um, they have a lot of work to do. But as long as he's healthy, look at me, as long as he's healthy, <laughs> they should be okay. And okay. I wouldn't mind seeing them in the playoffs. And if since the Jets have imploded, <laughs> I think I will be rooting for the Bengals. The Bengals. All right. So they play the Titans. And if not the Bengals, then I'll probably the Chiefs. Okay. Titans on the road, short week to see play. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. Unless he gets, unless something happens during practice, unless like it gets to a point where mm-hmm. they cannot deny that this On is On the happening. road in Tennessee after a short week, that's tough. That's, that, if it was a home game, maybe I could see it, but the extra travel day and the day away from the doctor and the extra work that has to go in, that's tough. That That's my thing. If it was a home game, I could see it because he could go into the facility every day, get work done, get rehab, get treated. I think he's going to – who's after them? The Cardinals. They can beat the Cardinals. They, on the road, they can could, they could do that. Uh, then they play the Seahawks at home. Then I think it's their bye, and then they come back and play the 49ers on the road. Okay, so he needs to be well for the 49ers because he can. they can beat those other teams. You can beat the Seahawks, the Cardinals, mm-hmm. the Titans. You want him well for the Niners game. Because the Niners will demolish you if you do not have everything together. So they could pull a giant. And I think he's feeling he's probably pushing like, look, the buy is coming, so that's when I'll get all my rest. And if I guess if there's no like muscle tear, mm-hmm. he's probably like, you know, it's just a calf injury, it's just swollen, a little inflammation. Pump. Swollen for two months? Come on. Well, that's, well, that's the months. thing I don't like. No, are they? Tell, no one's telling the truth about his injury, and I don't get it. Is it's he a nuclear not weapon? A, is he? It's, it's is not he a swollen calf. Gold? Like, what is the secrecy about? Every team announces who's injured and who's not. I, I think it's, it's like I think you're it's not hiding. Of, yeah. It's it's just weird how tight-lipped they've been about his injury. I mean, we didn't know Jack until the start of the season. That's how secret it was. So that we didn't kind, so do you think how, that says like I don't like that move as an and I. And this is not uncommon. A lot of teams cover up or try to play down certain injuries. But those are truly, I think, like minor injuries where maybe Mm -hmm. after a week or two the player does get better. But like you said, he was out for the whole summer, flopped the first two games, Mm -hmm. played okay yesterday, you know. And I think that was in part because the offensive line actually played 
like an offensive line should play. But yeah, the other other parts of the team stepped up for him yeah. to be for him to not get re injured to mm-hmm. protect them as much. You know, he didn't have killer numbers. He didn't he didn't no. throw for no, but he yards. but he once again proved why he's there. Right, that you know, and, even and, with me beat up, even with me with a brace in the back of my calf, we are winning. But let me ask you this real quick before we before we pivot. Just one last question. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it's taking away? their offense because the passes have to be quick. He can't let the routes develop, and because he has to get the ball that quicker so he doesn't get hit, do you think that's killing their offense? Yeah, look at it. I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. So the field, goal, the field goals last night helped them win. Right, it the, wasn't necessarily him. But that, that's what I'm saying. So like, it, He put them in position to get those field goals. Right, and it's the same situation we had with Zach Wilson to, bring, to tie it all together. See? Big circle. Big circle. <laughs> right? You can't open your whole playbook with a guy who can't throw the ball the way it's supposed to be run. Right? He, he can't – you can't throw the deep ball. You can't figure out how to have routes develop, and you can't – you know, you have to shorten your, your playbook. You can't open that tree up because he's limited to what he can do. So if that's the case, get a quarterback in there who can run that playbook the right way, and you could – Use Chase. You could use Higgins. You can use Mixon, and not be a wash, rinse, and repeat. What's that say? Believe in Zach Wilson. It, oh, no, Wilson. actually, it's it's the Zach Wilson we believe. Get it right, Sean. Yeah. Okay, it's Come in on. Zach Wilson. If you're, we gonna, believe. if you're gonna throw it in our face, get it right. <laughs> Do it right. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so I'll be watching or through the red zone, and I hope that Joe. I hope he's healthy. All right. Hope he stays healthy. Mm-hmm. So since the Jets are not doing it this season, I'm just going to put my eggs in a few other baskets, and oh, one of them but will be Bengals. But in the Bengals' basket, where they also got an injured QB, I don't think that's... Yeah, you're weird. I don't, I don't it, know. It, but, you don't, but do Bro. you know who their QB is? Come on. I have faith in Joey so B. Pearl. Just like how you have faith in Aaron Rodgers, oh. girl. Look, look at the team. I have, listen, Aaron Rodgers got injured. There's a big difference. And he got, like, Achilles torn injury. Okay. We're talking about... What's Joey just like limping for a also, day or two? Does, you said he was out for two months, right? And I don't know enough about sports, but like, <laughs> listen, I feel like, you know, I, I can make things make sense. This man was out for two months. His calf is swollen as hell. And you're still betting on this team? Yeah. But yeah, you want to wear this? You want to wear this? We're Jeff fans, right? Yeah. <laughs> we need the misery. We can't just support the 49ers or the Chiefs yeah, who win it's every no week. Fun. I we mean, we I need to stress out. Yeah, we need to stress out. I and it's just the better. It's like just an underdog. That's what it is. And, uh, and you know what? Joey B has always been an underdog. He's always been that, treated like he hasn't been able to perform, even though he's a Heisman winner and all that. But I feel like I put my eggs in there. I put some mm-hmm. of my eggs in their basket because if we are overblowing the calf injury, then he is going to be fine. Okay. And okay. as the season goes on, they are going to get hotter. And okay. I, his talent, his skill, and that team together could do very bad damage to other teams. So He's a pretty yeah. good looking guy. He's great looking. I love his voice. Keep talking. <laughs> and the Chiefs, I like I said, I root for the Chiefs because I like Mahomes. I like Kelsey. But, I mean, if they don't go to the playoffs or the Super Bowl, I really wouldn't necessarily care. Okay. In fantasy, we believe. And, uh, right. and Joey's in my fantasy. So, come on, Joe. Okay. And McPherson, who finally got me some points. Because the first two games, he got me nothing. Damn, complaining about the kicker is crazy. <laughs> All right. Uh, we had a big scoring week in the NFL, so I think let's pass on the Dolphins and let's do uh, – let's pivot to college football. Yes. Yeah. So, and uh, I watched that game, so we're talking about – So a couple of college football stories. We have the Notre Dame game, which they had 10 guys on the field and let – Ohio State win, which is an excuse. Yeah, I watched that game too. That was. I love Marcus Freeman, the Notre Dame coach, and it is because he's just great to look at. I love you, Marcus. <laughs> and you know, first black head coach of Notre Dame, and yes. he's very good. He's got yes. the locker room together. He's brought a lot of spirit and hope but, into but, that. But, but you can't have ten guys on the field in the final play of the game. You, you can't. No. You have well, it's, well, he's been showing that he's been making some mistakes. Right. What's he's, his name? He's, he's very young. Marcus Freeman. Marcus Freeman. Oh God. Oh, <laughs> what's wrong? Because the the show's turning into a thirst trap. <gasps> oh it's God! Not. I just want to know what he looks like. I don't know what any of these people look like. Well, look. He's Once great. you see it, me, Ad. You're gonna on. agree. I'm straight, and I know it. You're gonna yeah. agree. Okay. You're gonna be like, oh, yeah. He's just he's you know he's all right looking. Girl, stop. He's not ugly. He's just not my Listen. type. Listen. Okay, he's, he's not, not right me, Ad's looking. type. But 
That was no, but the best part of that game mm -hmm. was when it was over and Ryan Day took the microphone. He was like, "Where is Lou Holtz? <laughs> Where is Lou Holtz? Where is he now? How dare he say that about our players?" I, love I Ryan was Day. like, "Love it." I love Ryan. I lo college football is a vibe. It, it's not even a sport. It's a vibe. It's absolutely amazing. Well, I think what college, what makes college football special compared to the NFL is just that because it's so vast and it's mm -hmm. so many teams, there's just like golden nuggets everywhere. Yeah. Like, you know, mm -hmm. in the NFL, there's few teams that are very, very heavy in success. And it's sort of like that in college football. But over the last few years, it's been expanding. Mm -hmm. And now more teams be can be more relevant or get back to their relevancy like right. Notre Dame because – once Ohio and Alabama took over, Notre Dame just kind of like mm -hmm. went into the background. But now... Touchdown Jesus is back. Yes. And now... Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus. And you know who else is a big believer in Jesus? Oh. Our boy Prime Time. Oh, no. From Colorado. Now, yeah, Prime. That game was hard to watch. <sighs> yeah. So they go to Oregon. Right? They go... Yeah. They're, so they're not at home. Mm -hmm. And Oregon is a college football team that, let's be honest, no one truly cares about. <laughs> no one cares, cares about what they somehow always they're seem relevant. to be a top they're, 10 ranked yeah, team. Yeah, they're irrelevant, but I feel like, you know, they they just don't have that type of no one looks at them or star power. Yeah, no one looks at they them. They don't got swag. I don't know, but they uh, shut up prime time, actually. They, yeah. they were this close to getting shut out. Yeah. So what was the final score? Like I think 40 it was to 6 or something like that? 63 to 7. Oh. I was being nice. <laughs> a seven? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, did you point out? Did you get the? I didn't have. I, I didn't have anything from him, but I, I know, like he said. The so or the coach of Oregon State said, "We're not in it for clicks. We're here for wins." So during the halftime, the coach of Oregon, you know, gathered his troops together and gave a great prep. Let's pep be a rally good. Leo, let's be a good podcast show. Let's find out the guy's name. Yeah. Oregon <laughs> coach. Yeah, sorry guys. Name. <laughs> let's, let's be a good. Let's be a, a five real, minutes quickly. Uh, what's his name? Dan Lenning. Dan That's, Lenning. Okay. So there he we go. pretty much said, you know, their that team is all flash. We're substance. They do it for clicks. Mm -hmm. We do it for wins. They don't respect us. Pretty much calling out that. Uh, you know, Colorado's only got all this heat on them because of primetime. Mm -hmm. And without primetime there, they're a bunch of nobodies, which is not a lie. I I don't know if it's a lie, but I, I you can't deny he's got talent in that room. And he's oh, yeah. got them playing a brand of football that's fun to watch. I think it's not maybe it won't work. I think that's what we're maybe seeing right you now. No, I think I think it will work. I think first of all, he took over a program that has been struggling over the last few years. Right. So he's trying to rebuild that, and the best way to rebuild it, besides getting talent, skill, and recruiting, is through your system. culture. Yeah, and showing them that you know, listen, I'm not a loser, and I'm not about to coach a losing team. Mm -hmm. So these are the things we're going to do. I am the loudmouth. But what I like about the Colorado team is that he is the loudmouth. Yeah. His players don't go talking about how they're so great and good and how they're going to win and. They don't talk that trash. Yeah, I, I respect that for a college coach that, res uh, that respects kids like that because they are kids. Let's be real. These yeah. guys are 18, 19, and 20. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're not adults. They're children. No, and he's raising them. Right. And he's going back to sort of an old school way of coaching young men, which mm -hmm. is being tough, calling them out, replacing them, kicking them off the team if they do not perform. But, like, that's my child, and if you talk bad about them, get ready. Oh God! Right, but, but that's what he does, right? He's he's protecting them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, thought, I'm not, I'm not I saying you meant if he was talking about people. No, 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 not him. I'm talking. I'm talking. If if somebody else was talking about my kids like that. Oh yeah. I'm fighting the guy. I'm fighting the dad. Right. Yeah, of course. But of I'm course. gonna be tough on them, right? And like, I I respect that. I I think that's a really smart way to take. I, we haven't seen a coach do that in a while. Yeah, I right? do. Th I don't know who's the who's on the rest of C Colorado's schedule, but mm -hmm. I feel like this may be one of the few teams that they actually lose. I don't know if they lose another game because I feel like Dion is not going to let himself get embarrassed like that again. Right? Because that was an embarrassment. Yeah, no, it it, it was because it you, it does look lose. like it does look like you know what I did all this talking, we did all this talking, we are all flash, mm -hmm. we are all clicks, and then we let Oregon, not Ohio, not Alabama. Not Penn State. Well, the thing we is, they're not going to be they're not going to be playing those teams. That's that's the thing because of the way because of their division. But my thing is, Oregon is not the big bad wolf in their division. It's it's Oregon and it's USC who they play next. USC is going to be a, a tough. And game we all for them. know USC is a better program than 
Oregon. Well, they produce better players. Because they're a better uh, program. <laughs> uh, so it's USC, Arizona State, Stanford, UCLA. That's a win. Oregon State, that's tough. Arizona, Washington State, and Utah. So They it, can beat Washington State. I, they it, can beat Utah. Yeah, there are wins on that schedule and there's losses on that schedule. It, it, it's But for a young college football team to pull out ranked wins is tough. And what they did against TCU and beating a ranked team like that was impressive. And if he could pull out maybe two or three more wins like that, this Colorado team next year is going to be big. It's going to be big. And they're going to have a good rank. And maybe they'll we get out of the Pac-12. We need more coaches like him. In college football, yeah. Yeah. I think just in general. Just, all the coaches are bland. And he's making the trans the uh, transfer portal work for him. Yes. I think it's going to destroy yes. other programs. I think he's probably the one of the few people who know how to well, because, navigate that know, whole thing. In college football, we're moving towards a, a, a super division, which I don't agree with. But, you know, all, all the teams are starting to come together to one division eventually. And I think having a standalone division like the Pac-12 that has a lot of ranked teams and has competitiveness shows that you don't need to join a, a certain division. You can just be who you are in your division and still be competitive and still get ranked wins, right? Look, we should I, do a college football special. Uh, we don't talk about college football enough. I know, but I don't have the energy for that. That's because you, you waste all your energy on losing New York teams. Because I'm a fan, Jessica. Well, fan. you can be a fan of other things. Like what? College football. I am a fan of college football. I watch, uh, who do I watch every week? I watch on a day every week. Touchdown Jesus. <laughs> Touchdown Jesus. You know, I think I'm going to start watching them every week, too. Okay. They're on NBC every week. They, mm. have a, they, have a, they have a deal. I'll just be looking for the sidelines. <laughs> All right. All right. But b- before we get off the rails, uh, we're going to end it here. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, everybody. Uh, yeah. Catch us on Thursday. It'll be me, Jessica. And Sam, the return of oh, yeah, Sam. Sam. It's going to be fun. The real reason why Aaron Rodgers is hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, peace out, y'all. Take care. Bye.